Welcome to IBFD's Tax Takes. This video series aims to deliver brief, timely and practical insights and analyses of COVID-19's implications for our global tax community. I'm Barry Larking and with me at an appropriate distance is Prem Kumar Baldusering, a principal research associate at the IBFD. Um, so we're here with our first uh, episode. Uh, I'm afraid that the recording quality may not be quite up to the normal IBFD standard, but I hope the content will make up for that. Uh, during the coming weeks, we, the IBFD will be inviting uh, leading tax experts to comment on uh, various aspects of the tax uh, implications of COVID-19, including things like transfer pricing, uh, tax treaty implications, how businesses are responding and how tax administrations are responding, um, policy issues, and also a look at a few individual countries and regions and more. So uh, to find out uh, more, check out the IBFD uh, Tax Takes uh, website uh, on the link on the screen and or uh, check your social media. Now, what are we going to talk about today? Well, this video is going to look at what governments are currently doing or are considering doing in terms of the tax relief uh, measures in connection with the crisis. Barry, before we proceed, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, this COVID-19, that is a disease which is caused by the coronavirus, what does it have to do with tax? Uh, if we if we look at what the OECD has uh, has said in terms of what's possible, what what are the areas that uh, economic relief could be given in, uh, I think that gives us an idea as to where tax can play a role. Uh, in particular, they're looking at improving cash flow or liquidity for businesses and individuals. So think uh, tax refunds, tax rebates. Um, they are also suggesting that uh, the, the economic relief could be given to, to support consumption and investment. I think those are possibly slightly more longer term measures rather than the short term emergency measures that are currently being taken. Uh, also measures to stimulate employment or, or to put it slightly differently, to keep people employed uh, and, uh, and also to support the health sector. Uh, so talking of the health sector, uh, and, and we know that, that there's been some criticism of uh, um, how or the speed of response of governments to the health crisis. Uh, and I'm just wondering, Prem, what's your take on, on the equivalent speed of response in terms of tax measures? Well, if you take a helicopter view, uh, what you will see is that the first announcements of countries uh, taking these uh, tax measures started in the Far East, in countries like Cambodia, uh, South Korea, Malaysia, which is uh, logical because the crisis started in uh, China. So uh, the tax measures sort of followed the spread of this virus. And it started, uh, let's say, at the end of February that countries uh, announced uh, measures. And then in the course of March, the second week of March, you see that also uh, European, a lot of European countries uh, were hit by this uh, virus and they announced uh, uh, all kinds of uh, measures, including tax measures. Uh, also in China, China was a bit slow, but they were focusing, you know, on uh, building this uh, big hospital. And mid-March they came with uh, tax measures, publishing uh, some some tax measures. And also recently uh, the U United States were hit by this uh, virus and took this legislative uh, measures uh, to invest, uh, what is it, two trillion uh, into uh, the economy. And also uh, recently uh, some uh, countries in uh, Africa uh, followed, like Kenya, South Africa, etc. Yeah, OK, but I'm, what you're talking about there is the announcement of measures. And, and of course, it's also or as important, perhaps more important, how quickly those measures are actually implemented, isn't it? And uh, that's something I think we need to, to follow closely. One aspect or a related aspect is uh, the ease of access uh, once the measures have been implemented, actually getting the financial uh, support to uh, to taxpayers. 
if the if the relief is automatic, uh, then obviously that's fairly simple. If they if they have to uh, if they have to file requests uh, to to get the relief, then that could obviously take more time. Uh, and that's something I think we've seen in in uh, in the U.S. For example, uh, deferrals are many of the deferrals are are automatic, uh, and I think that's probably a good thing. Um, yeah, it's not just a question of uh, the effectiveness of the, the the measures as such, but countries actually have to be able to afford uh, the measures. And, and and I noticed an interesting quote from the IMF recently in terms of the health spending. They said that that must occur regardless of how much room there is in a, a, a budget or in, in the budget of a country. Um, is that something that also sh does apply or should apply to tax or are we seeing different responses to to uh, to tax measures according to how healthy the finances of a country are? Um, it, it differs. Uh, uh, with, if you compare countries with each other, then you see that you have uh, countries uh, which are financially stronger than other ones, so they can afford more generous uh, tax uh, measures. And if you look at the amounts, eh, if you uh, look at the amounts, for instance, of what countries are going to invest in their uh, economies, these are dazzling amounts like the Netherlands uh, will invest 90 billion, Italy 30 billion, France 45 billion, the US, as I just said, 2 trillion, uh, Germany 500 billion, and recently also the uh, European Union uh, came up with the announcement that they will invest 540 billion. Um, and uh, if you look at the range of, of these amounts, then you see that the less uh, stronger countries in terms of uh, budgets are, for instance, France and uh, Italy, especially Italy. And therefore, uh, I think they will have to uh, knock on the doors of the EU for further uh, support. Mm, yeah, yeah. I mean that that uh, that aligns with uh, with a recent uh, economic uh, report that uh, analysis I saw, uh, where they indicated that I think Germany and the U.S. We're in the top, the top two in terms of uh, uh, for government spending to address the the crisis, with something like seven percent of GDP uh, being being uh, uh, devoted to it. And other countries like Italy, Belgium, and Spain, uh, which are actually under one percent. Let's take a look, a, a closer look at uh, the 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 way that countries are responding to the tax. Uh, crisis and uh, in the form of an OECD uh, analysis uh, on the basis, this is an excerpt from that, showing how different countries have uh, addressed uh, the crisis in terms of the different tax types. Uh, and Prem, I mean, what, what's your take on this? Yeah, this is a nice slide. What this slide teaches us, shows us, is that countries use different taxes to implement tax measures to support uh, 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 taxpayers. Um, and you see a variety indeed of taxes, VAT, uh, corporate income tax, personal income tax, uh, property taxes, etc., etc. And if you look, have a closer look, you will see that the CIT, the corporate income tax, is used by uh, the vast majority of uh, countries. Um, but within the specific measures, if you dive into the specific measures, you, you will detect uh, what I call a top three of specific tax measures. And the first one is the, the absolute winner is uh, providing extension of filing and payment deadlines. The second one is income tax measures within the context of uh, businesses. And also the third place, the suspension of uh, tax audits. And um, within, within this, uh, the second one, the income tax measures related to businesses, you also see a variety of measures like tax rebates, uh, tax credits, uh, depreciation allowances, uh, which are relaxed, uh, loss relief measures, which are relaxed, etc., etc. 
So the conclusion from, from this slide is uh, countries use a variety of taxes and within those taxes also, especially related to businesses, you see a great variety of specific measures. Yeah, and maybe it's interesting to compare what you've just said in terms of the, the types of taxes and the types of measures that are being taken in practice with what the OECD is recommending uh, could be taken. And the first one is clearly something you've already mentioned. The first thing you mentioned, the extension of filing and tax payment deadlines, clearly closely related to that, we have the remitting of penalties and interest, because there's no point in deferring the deadlines if you then hit people with penalties and interest. Uh, tax debt payment plans is also a, a, an issue where where people are suffering uh, hardship because they can't pay the taxes because of uh, of, of uh, the worsened worsened financial situation. So there are suggestions to make it easier to access those plans and to make them uh, longer. Uh, putting debt collection on hold. I know that Belgium and Ireland, for example, have done that entirely uh, subject to uh, statute of limitation issues. Getting tax refunds back to taxpayers quicker, uh, think of fast track, to track VAT refunds and obviously income tax uh, refunds. Relaxing audit policy was one of the things that you mentioned as well that's being, being uh, uh, done already. Uh, providing tax certainty uh, in particular where it's not clear if there is a temporary measure, how temporary temporary is, how long it's going to last. And then finally, en enhanced taxpayer services and communication, uh, thinking there in particular about uh, enhanced digital uh, services, keeping tax authority service centres open uh, long longer, longer working hours, in other words, making them e more easy to access. And obviously not forgetting the, the digitally challenged so that they don't miss out on the benefits. Now, Prem, there's one thing that... Uh, you didn't mention also it was not on the OECD's list and that's tax rate reductions. Uh, are we seeing anything in that area? Yeah, what I saw, what I noticed is that a few, only a few countries have uh, a reduction in their statutory tax rates. What I found so far is, for instance, uh, Kenya, which is uh, which has announced announced a corporate income tax reduction from 30% to 25% and a VAT reduction from 16 to 14% and I saw also Hungary uh, announcing a rate reduction in their social security contributions of 2% but those are the direct more direct rate reductions but uh, we should keep in mind that there are also indirect rate reductions. What I mean with that is if you increase your depreciation allowances by uh, 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 allowing taxpayers to uh, a quicker depreciation or an immediate depreciation of qualifying asset, assets, it will reduce your effective tax rate. So it's not a statutory rate reduction, but indirectly you decrease your taxable profits with uh, <clears throat> these kinds of measures and thereby decreasing your effective uh, tax rates. Yeah, yeah, okay. Barry, I have a question uh, to you. Um, if you look at the overview of measures, you see a lot of usual, what we call usual measures, but uh, have you usual seen- Usual suspects. Usual suspects, yeah. <laughs> indeed. <laughs> But uh, have you seen unusual measures being well, taken? Well, I, yeah, I mean, I guess usual is a very, very strange word to use in this context because what would would have been unusual uh, before the corona crisis is becoming fastly becoming usual. Um, in particular, in the context of, of health support, uh, we, we were seeing a lot of measures that, that are targeted at, uh, at, at supporting the, uh, the health uh, effort, uh, in particular things like uh, tax breaks for health workers, the U.S. has an interesting variation on the payroll tax uh, relief, which is designed to help uh, keep sick employees at home uh, rather than them going to work because they can't afford uh, not to. And uh, what else? Yeah, we, we, we've also we're also seeing quite a lot of indirect tax uh, measures uh, aimed at the, the, the for example, um, uh, relief for VAT import duties on um, corona-related product uh, imports. 
So I think that's one one particularly unusual, if you like to call it that, uh, area. Uh, business incentives somewhat less uh, less common generally, I think, because they are, as I said earlier on, perhaps more longer term. But one interesting one in Indonesia, uh, I saw that they have a deferral of corporate income tax for um, uh, on profits made on the sale of imported goods. It doesn't seem to be restricted to uh, health products in that case. And what I particularly like is uh, in Costa Rica, where they've introduced a $2,000 tax credit for providers of short-term accommodation. Uh, and I like that in particular because it's it's simple. And, and I think one of the problems with these measures is uh, that uh, whilst individually they may look simple, uh, when you look at the sheer numbers and the diversity, you get a very complex picture uh, that's not helped uh, once you dive into the, the detail of individual measures and actually realize you know, how complicated they are in practice. Also, the interaction of, uh, of some of these measures uh, is, is a factor in, in creating this complex uh, picture that we're seeing. Uh, take, for example, uh, the, the way that um, tax de or deferrals of uh, filing uh, filing deadlines interact with uh, uh, tax refunds. If you defer a filing deadline, that's generally speaking, and, and payment deadline, that's generally speaking good because uh, people uh, can keep their money for longer. But if uh, they were expecting a tax refund when they filed their tax return, obviously that's, that's not such good news. So there are you know, pros and cons to some of these measures. Um, I think there's another, in talking of complexity, there's another issue uh, that, that uh, or rela related issue, and that is whether uh, tax relief is given generically, in other words, everybody gets it, or only subject to conditions. I'm wondering, Prem, you know, what are we seeing in that sense? Uh, is there a tendency for less generous, for, 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 for less generic uh, measures or, or not? Uh, there is a tendency for specific tax measures because governments are not playing for Santa Claus. You know, uh, they are spending these billions and billions uh, in their economy, uh, amongst others, through tax reliefs. But uh, most of the tax reliefs we see are subject to conditions. Just to give you two random examples, in Germany, for instance, uh, you will get you can get a tax deferral on, on tax collection. But it is subject to the condition that the normal tax collection would co would cause a considerable hardship for the taxpayer. And although the German tax authorities are instructed not to be too strict in applying these rules, I can see in front of me the practical problems in interpreting and applying these rules, uh, like what is considerable and what is a hardship. So uh, another example is, for instance, in uh, South Africa, you can get a tax deferral on payroll taxes, but only if you have a low uh, revenue and if you are a, a qualified, let's say, a tax compliant uh, mm -hmm. taxpayer. Uh, that also uh, leads to in interpretive uh, yeah. issues. What do they mean by tax compliant? <clears throat> Indeed, and that adds to what we are talking about, the complexity of these yeah. measures. Yeah. Uh, it's nice to have these announcements that we are going to do something about depreciation, we are going to give tax rebates, extension of filing deadlines, etc. But the practical, the translation to the practice I think uh, and, and uh, that we will need more guidance uh, on that. And that's also what I hear from tax advisors around us and organizations. What are the, you know, as you as you say, the devil is in the detail. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, OK, well, thanks. Thanks, Prem. Uh, I think in the interest of time, we did promise that these would be brief videos. So so uh, I'm think this is a good opportunity to stop. We're going to be looking no doubt more about this complexity uh, issue and the detail of the rules in upcoming videos. Um, for those of you who are looking for more information, please uh, take a, a look at the IBFT's tax, tax takes uh, pages on their website uh, where you can find uh, recordings of these videos, 
some supplementary PowerPoint presentations and also links to various uh, resources. And with that, I would thank you for your attention. And I think, Prem, uh, you had a, a special greeting uh, for, for our viewers. Yeah, uh, you know, in these hard times, uh, we cannot shake hands anymore or hug each other. Each other. So what I propose uh, is a universal greeting uh, stemming from India, and that is namaste to you all. Mm. Namaste.